Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Osteoplastic functional disorders are disease categories that present with osteoplastic symptoms like heartburn, chest pain, dysphagia, or globus, and should not be explained by e either mechanical obstruction like structure of tumor or dendritic osteoplastitis, or more a major motor disorders or GERD. According to Rome 4, it has been divided into functional chest pain, functional heartburn, reflux hypersensitivity, globus, and functional dysphagia. So the diagnostic for workup for these functional disorders are includes uh, esophageal gastroendoscopy with or without mucosal biopsy, uh, the use of high resolution manometry, and the third uh, is esophageal pH monitoring and or impedance. The high resolution manometry is a 36 solid state sensors with one centimeter intervals that it, it goes to the uh, computer, the data will go to the computer and make a topography, colored topography. It has been uh, used to exclude uh, uh, major osteophageal motor disorders like achalasia, distal osteophageal spasm, Jack Hammer esophagus, abstinent uh, peristalsis, uh, osophageal gastroesophageal uh, 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 junction uh, obstruction, and, but the presence of ineffective esophageal motility or fragmented peristalsis does not exclude any functional uh, esophageal disorder. So, the commonest cause for uh, motility disorder is the achalasia, and confirmed by uh, suspected or confirmed by uh, esophageal gastroendoscopy, and uh, confirmed by high resolution manometry. And you have now three types of achalasia: type one or two or three, according to the, the protogram you see. Uh, but for functional osteophageal disorders, as we said, this is the normal uh, osteophageal peristalsis. But if it is weak peristalsis or failed peristalsis, this does not uh, make it a uh, uh, major motor disorder. It can occur with os uh, functional osteophageal disorders. So second is the osteophageal pH metry, which is the potocacitor 5 cm above the LES and measure 24-hour uh, pH or put a capsule called the Bravo capsule attached six centimeter above the uh, uh, G junction and then transmit the uh, uh, data to uh, 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 apparatus uh, built uh, on uh, around the belt of the patient. For a subject pH metry, you measure how may, much time it uh, percent of uh, less than pH and whether it is associated with symptoms or not. This is the symptoms and if it is associated or not, and make what we call symptom index or symptom associated probability. This is the Bravo capsule, and this is uh, a sample of the monitoring, and this is the pH uh, 4, and this is the drop uh, around uh, these times below pH 4. What about impedance? Impedance is uh, what we call combined multi-channel intrahumanal impedance with pH monitor. This is electrodes. Uh, they are put uh, to measure the detects the acid and even non acid uh, material. Uh, and this uh, it is uh, started at three centimeter above pH uh, above the uh, junction and make the resistance or what we call impedance. And if the bolus will go uh, down, the, it will uh, uh, instead of this baseline, it will go down. And according as well as the uh, uh, if there is refluxate, it will go down. And the amount of down below pH four will be the acid clearance time. Let's see what's going on. This is uh, uh, the bolus. Uh, so visual impedance monitoring, uh, it will go this liquid swallow will go like this and the drop will occur uh, in the impedance as, lo as long as the bolus will go down and if there is refluxate it will go up like this so we can measure uh, if the patient has uh, swallow so it will drop like this if the patient have impedance it will be drop like this so if the patient will have uh, this drop below pH uh, 4, this is pH 4, so it will be a little, it will be uh, non-acid reflux or weakly acid reflux if there is not less than 4. 
which of, the, which of them we use, the impedance or the pH. It depends whether we have a history of documented GERD in these patients, so you can use the impedance uh, on PBI. But if you don't have documented GERD, uh, then you will have uh, 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 off PPI, whether pH, pH or impedance. There is also a new mucosal, what we call mucosal impedance. This is a new tool that will go through the scope, and so it will go through the scope like this, and it can measure the, uh, detect the, uh, the reflux uh, uh, during uh, the endoscopy and actually this paper shows that patient who is non-GERD like achalasia will differ from eosinophilic osteoarthritis uh, and also patient with uh, from GERD or very low uh, eosinophilic osteoarthritis detection by the mucosal impedance. So back to the function of visual disorders. Now we have five disorders: the function of chest pain, the heartburn, hypertensivity, globus, and dysphagia. The function of chest pain should uh, be, be present for the past three months at, and started six months earlier before diagnosis and for once weekly. And you should exclude cardiac causes. You should also exclude heartburn and dysphagia. You, uh, reflux uh, and eosinophilic osteoarthritis will be ruled out, as we said. Uh, uh, is visualized by endoscopy, GERD or by pH or impedance, and major motor disorders by uh, uh, utility. And this is the algorithm. This is non cardiac chest pain. If you have endoscopy, then if you have, the endoscopy will show whether the patient have uh, uh, LA grade B uh, to D, mean, means that he is GERD, and you try titrate uh, PPI. But if it is grade A normal or grade A, that means that you need to do uh, pH metry of PPI because we don't have documentation. If there is positive uh, acid exposure time, which means reflux, so the patient will be NERD, so we'll treat as NERD. If it is negative, then you do motility. And if the motility positive will be achalasia or diffuse of shear spasm or whatever, if it is negative, then we will have functional chest pain. For functional heartburn, similar, but you need to be twice a week. And this pain, sh sh uh, no relief with anti-secretory, uh, reflux uh, and uh, ruled out and motor disorder. So, and this is the plan, heartburn, no alarm symptoms, try a PPI trial, if it is okay, GERD, if no response uh, uh, endoscopy as, as before, but if negative, you will go for ambulatory pH of PPI, if, uh, if it is positive association index, uh, symptom association or acid exposure time to be NERD. If it is negative, it will be, uh, you should do motility study, achalasia uh, or diffuse spasm, or negative, it will be functional heartburn. So the treatment of functional heartburn uh, usually include reassurance, uh, avoid of any repeated invasive testing because already diagnosis is there, and avoid escalation of anti-reflux th uh, therapy and sending the patient specially to surgery. Consider esophageal pain modulators as we will discuss later. Esophageal hypersensitivity, which include that it occurs twice a week, heartburn, chest pain is there, but no esophageal, uh, xenophilic esophagitis by endoscopy and biopsy, and motor disorders are negative, and the symptoms have association with reflux. Reassurance, uh, treatment empiric, but they have some response to anti secretor therapy, other, better than other functional esophageal disorders, but the mainstay, as we will say, is the, is the pain modulators. So for functional esophageal disorders with heartburn, <coughs> you do endoscopy, about 70% will have uh, normal endoscopy, then you do pH metry 50-50. If it is abnormal pH, it will be NERD. If it is uh, normal, pH, then you will, you will go for, if there is association with symptoms, yes, it will be reflux and hypersensitivity. If it is not associated with index, uh, it will be around 60% uh, functional heartburn. And this is another study that, it, uh, that chance would be more if the patient already have failed PPI. If you have failed PPI, about 60 something will be having functional heartburn, and if, if they have uh, about 12 
uh, uh, something will be have uh, reflux hypersensitivity, which means about 75, and patient uh, left with 25% only the uh, refractory GERD. So the heartburn, normal endoscopy, unproven GERD, you will have off PPI impedance or pH metry, and if it is not associated function of burn, if it is associated with reflux hypersensitivity, if abnormal acid exposure and association, it will be nerve. But so if you you uh, 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 a sort of discriminate between functional heartburn and reflux hypersensitivity, that means that uh, if there is association, no association, it will be a functional heartburn. If there is reflux association, it will be reflux hypersensitivity. And this is the uh, algorithm altogether. But uh, I need to stress here that if we go here, the endoscopy, unproven GERD, this is the algorithm we said. But if it is proved GERD, so a patient will be on PPI and, and have abnormal acid exposure, it will be GERD. If it is have normal acid exposure and negative acid, it will be also functional heartburn, but overlying GERD. So GERD overlap with functional heartburn, and if there is some association, it will be GERD overlap with reflux hypersensitivity. So we can have functional heartburn, reflux hypersensitivity, NERD, or GERD overlap, uh, or GERD. So actually, you have a, short of, uh, a sort of heartburn spectrum, which means that if they have very high uh, acid exposure, it will be erosive esophagitis. If it is m more acid and less, and some esophageal hypersensitivity, it will be NERD. If it is more esophageal hypersensitivity and less uh, acid, but still there is some acid, it will be reflux hypersensitivity. If it is total esophageal hypersensitivity, if it is total uh, functional, it will be functional heartburn because of hypersensitivity. The fourth of the function uh, sufficient disorder is globus, which means it also it, that it, it is already once a week, and it, 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 it is a sensation of a lump of foreign body in the throat, but without uh, real dysphagia. Actually, can occur between meals, no dysphagia or dysphagia, and by endoscopy, there is no gastric inlet patch in the proximal esophagus, no reflux or zephyric esophagitis, and no motor disorder. And this is the plan, non uh, 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 painful throat uh, globus. Then you will, uh, according to the uh, uh, dysphagia or MT or other causes to rule out extrinsic causes, then in the upper endoscopy, if it is negative, reflux symptoms, PPI trial, if uh, response, it will be GERD. If it is not, it will be globus sensation. The explanation and reassurance is the main treatment because most of the patient will persist in up to 75% of the patient for more than three years. The last one is the functional dysphagia, which can occur once a week, and this patient will have a, uh, should uh, have a, a sw difficulty in swallowing or uh, abnormal passage the, of the bolus to the esophagus, but no mucosal or structural abnormality, no xenophilic esophagitis, no reflux, no motor disorder, and uh, the flow is almost the same, dysphagia, rule EGD or barium swallow. If it is negative, you will have a reflux. If it is, yes, it will, you have trial of PPI, uh, if it is GERD. If it is negative, motility. If it is, uh, okay, achalasia, that's fine. If it is not, then go for proximal esophagus and ENT and go do a video swallow. Uh, and if it is negative, it will be functional dysphagia. The treatment of functional uh, esophageal disorders will depend on centrally directed therapies and the peripheral directed therapy. And uh, usually it, it occurs on the change of the perception, usually neuromodulator, psychological intervention, and alternative and complementary medicine. And this is the table of the functional esophageal disorders management, the uh, tricyclic antidepressant. They have a sort of 50 to 60% response, in, especially in non-cardiac pain, non chest pain and in globus. Uh, SSRIs, same, uh, especially in sertraline. Uh, Trazodone, uh, 
and uh, SNRIs usually 50 percent also thiophilin and gabapentin thiophilin could be used in non cartilage pain gabapentin usually in globus with higher chance of success around 60 percent uh, this is a hierarchy of the antidepressants for pain mode reduction uh, ventaxafen followed by sertaline impiramine trazodone and uh, praxotene global health uh, almost uh, with the reverse of this one and the same uh, results. For usually start low dose and initiate with 10 to 15 milligrams uh, per time and then increase every four weeks and watch for side effects. If the side effects reduce the dose and or find an alternative drugs and you can combine with SSRIs. There's other interventions for psychological comorbidity in functional uh, chest pain, cognitive therapy, hypnotherapy, others. But usually, uh, despite the high prevalence of the uh, and increasing awareness, functional disorders have not been well studied. Therefore, effective management approaches have been difficult to establish. Fundamental mechanism of symptom production is poorly defined, but other new technologies application may help this process.